DIY builds in the great state of Texas. My name is Phil, your host. And I've been getting a lot of questions on Instagram and a couple other places about batteries. So I did a video about uh, battery chargers, and that's on my YouTube channel. You guys will look that up. I might talk a little bit about chargers today, but this is mainly going to talk about the two different types of batteries that I use. So we're going to be talking about uh, lead acid batteries. And we're also going to be talking about lithium ion batteries. Now, I know, now this is going to be the actual battery packs that I use. I know there's other guys that have much smaller builds that use the small size lithium ion batteries kind of tied together in a manifold. I don't know a whole lot about those. So I'm sure there's some other videos online that talk about those. So I'm going to let those guys talk about those. I'm going to talk about what I talk about. So I'm going to talk about when you would want to use a lead acid battery and when you would want to use a lithium ion battery pack. So basically it boils down to how much power are you going to need to power your unit or how many amps you need to push your unit. So if you're using something that doesn't pull a lot of power like let's say an amplifier board or something like that that's just strictly Bluetooth, you wouldn't need a lead acid battery. You can do fine with a lithium ion battery. And I'll give you a perfect example of uh, that right here. This is a little project I made a while back. Some of you guys have seen the video. This is strictly a make any blue any speaker a Bluetooth speaker. All it is is a box with speaker ports and on the inside there's an amplifier with Bluetooth built in. And it has a lithium ion battery inside. And the battery looks like this one right here. It's a 6,000 milliamp battery pack. Uh, these are $30 at Amazon. That's where I get them. And the cool thing about these is when you order them, they come with a battery charger. And the cool thing about these chargers is when the light is red, the battery is charging. The light turns green. It's ready to go. So it's, it's basically plug and play. Very simple. And sometimes you can actually power your project off of this depending on how much you're actually using. And so this, this the lithium ion battery, again, comes with a little port right there to plug it in. But that's also where you're going to plug in your power as well. So what I do is I go ahead and use these pigtails that I buy. And you can tie them together with your charging port that you put on your unit so everything will be tied together so you can charge it from the outside. Now the way I charge mine is I'll show you right here. You see this little hole right here? That's where the battery charger actually plugs in and it's tied together with the battery on the inside. So this will go to the battery and charge it. And let me see if I can open up this on the inside and see if you can see it real well. I'm going to do my best here to uh, hopefully the light, let's see if I can turn the light here a little bit. As you can see that, uh, you see the battery is down here at the bottom laying down and you can see the cord coming into the amplifier to power it. But you can also see right here the little plug of the wires come down to the battery and you can see they tie together. Here's the grounds and there's the hot and of course there's the speaker connectors coming in. And this little device right here is pretty cool and of course you can see the switches and everything up there. But very very basic simple build. And it works really, really well, and it's it's light as a feather. That's the main difference between lithium-ion batteries and lead-acid batteries. This this has really got some weight to it. This one here is an 8 amp hour battery. Works really good, and this one here probably weighs about seven or eight, six or seven pounds in my hand, at least five, six pounds. And I'd be this probably weighs about one pound, if that extremely extremely light and it works really really good the difference is this one's only going to put out about three amps so you're not going to be able to power anything like a car radio or something like that but if you just have a bluetooth circuit even a bluetooth with fm this will work just fine and i'll give you an example of that right here let me get my cooler build and let me move a few things out of the way here so i can show you what i'm talking about uh, this is my cooler build that I did a while back and um, you see it's got six and a half inch speakers. I'm about to do another video on this one. Of 
course, that's the antenna wire going up through the handle. But let me show you on the inside here. As you can see, there's the FM radio with Bluetooth built in. And on this little plug right here, that's where the uh, cord is going to plug into to charge the battery. It's going to plug in just like that. And you plug it in. This way you don't have to open up the case and plug the battery in. And it works great. And it uh, works really, really well. Like I said, you guys will see this. I do have a video on this one, but I need to redo it. I'm actually going to take this tubing down the river with me this summer. And I can't wait. It's going to be really, really cool. So anyway, uh, let me show you what I have here. Uh, this is my zombie build. I'm sure some of y'all have seen this before. And this one has a full-size radio inside of it. So this one I went with quite quite the large battery. Now you can go with a 7 or 8 amp hour battery and it would work just fine. But it's not going to give you a whole lot of running time. This battery here probably gave about 2 or 3 hours running time for a full size car radio. So what I do is I step it up to these here. This is a 12 amp hour battery and you can also get a 15 which is the same size. Now it does, does have quite a bit of weight to it. It does make your project pretty heavy. This probably weighs, oh, probably about eight or nine pounds. Got, but that's what I have inside here, inside the zombie box. And that's what powers this car radio, and it works really, really well. Again, it's gonna, there's just no way that the lithium-ion battery could power that car radio. So, and if it did, it wouldn't power for very long. So you're going to need a lead-acid battery. If you're going to go with something like a car radio, or a big large amplifier, something's going to pull a lot of power, you're going to have to go with lead acid battery. But if you're just going to go with a regular Bluetooth circuit, these little lithium ion batteries are fantastic. I've used these in several builds that I have. As you can see, I had it in this little box right here. And it, I mean, it doesn't weigh a thing. I can lift it with my pinky finger. As you can see, very, very light. And also that cooler is pretty light too as well. Now this box right here is that's got some heft to it. It's got the bigger battery in there, but this is not made to really move around. I made this to sit on my desk, but it is a little heavy for me carrying it around. Now, one other thing I wanted to cover real quick was securing your battery to your project. Now, what I used to do is, let me see if I have one here. I used to use double-sided tape, as you can see right here, and that works okay, but when you're dealing with something that's heavy, and it gets tipped around a little bit, the tape tends to come loose. So that didn't work too well. I have seen some guys who will actually take the battery and lay it on its side and put some kind of strapping around it to hold the battery in place. Hey, that works perfectly fine. Works fantastic. What I found that I've been using, and it works really good, is I found this outdoor super strong Velcro. And of course, it comes in two pieces. It's got sticky on both sides, so you can peel it and stick it. And this this stuff holds like a vice. Works really, really good. And it's only about oh, I don't know, less than ten dollars at Amazon for a ten foot roll. And it works really, really good. It's called Outdoor Velcro. As you can see right here, I have a strip of it right here on the battery. That battery, this battery actually goes in that cooler that you were looking at just a minute. And like I said, the other thing is with lead acid batteries, uh, you will have to have a separate battery charger that you'll have to purchase if you don't have one on your own. Uh, again, I did a whole video on battery chargers. You can check that out, see what kind of battery charging options you want for your lead acid batteries. And the cool thing is with these lithium ion batteries, they come with a charger for, for 30 bucks. And this is 6,000 milliamps. It works great. Fantastic, like it doesn't weigh a thing. It'd be great. The only thing is, like I said, is you're going to have to order you some pigtails for it to be able to tie into your project. And if you want to be able to charge it outside your project, you're going to have to order some of these little connectors right here and solder your wires on the back side. I might have some over here and show you. Yeah, I thought I did. See here. Yeah, they have readily available, but anyway, it's these little connectors right. I just ordered some more. 
because I'm going to be doing a lot of projects with lithium ion batteries. And it works fantastic. Like I said, the cord just plugs in and your wires are tied down into the battery and your project. And it works great. So, I hope this answers some of the questions about batteries that I was receiving. Again, if your project pulls less than 3 amps, you can get away with lithium ion battery, uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth of FM, circuit boards work fine. If you're going to use a larger amplifier, and especially a car radio, you're going to need this battery right here, or something equivalent to it. I, I, don't go smaller than a 7 amp hour battery. I, I prefer to go with an 8 myself, and I think that works really, really well. This is an 8 right here. You see they're pretty much the same size and about the same weight. That's the 8 amp hour, the 7 amp hour, and you really can't tell the difference in size. So go ahead and go with 8 amp hour. It probably cost you, oh, I don't know, 17 or 18 dollars. And it'll work really good. And if you can, try to get something that's made for constant draw. Like these here are made for alarm systems. They do okay. Um, this one here is made for electric wheelchairs. So that's, it means it's made to be, to be constantly pulled on and charged back up. And batteries like that work fantastic. Let me say this right now. I really frown upon using a lawnmower battery, probably something similar in size. Yes, they will run your project, and they will work. The problem is the lawnmower batteries are made just for starting your lawnmower. They're not made to be constantly drawn down and back up, and eventually they're just going to wear out prematurely because they're not designed for that. You want something that's made to run electric scooters or backup power, as these here, that's made to be drawn down and then charge, charge back up. So if you can find wheelchair batteries, uh, kids power wheels, batteries, anything that's made for constant deep cycle draw, that's going to work great for your project. All right, everybody, um, I hope I answered the questions the best I can. I'm no expert on this. I mean, there's people out there a lot more experienced than I am. I've been doing this for about a year. So I'm just going, making this video to answer some of the questions that I've gotten, especially on Instagram about batteries and what, what do I use to power my project. How do I charge the battery? So again, I have a video on battery chargers. Look on my page, on my, my YouTube channel, you'll find that. And that's about all I have. Um, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Or I'll even shoot another video if I get enough of the same questions. I didn't answer any of your questions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a break for a second and I'm going to give you guys an update on the Mega Boombox project. I'm getting some questions about that as well. So let me clean this mess up here so I can make some room and I'll be right back with an up project update. Okay everybody, I'm back and before I talk about the big boombox build, I want to talk about monitoring your battery. And I just want to show you guys what I use. There's different types of uh, voltage uh, things you can look at. Voltage uh, readouts that will tell you what your battery is doing when you need to charge it. And this is the one that I use. It comes like this from Amazon. It's $10. It comes with a voltage indicator. Right here gives you a digital readout. And it comes with two USB ports to uh, charge your phone. Because if you try to buy these by themselves, they can be as much as 8 or $9. I figured, shoot, for $10, go ahead and get the double one. And it comes here, which you see on the back. It's got positive and negative to hook up. It also comes with some wires and connectors and everything to hook it up. And it also comes with jumper wires. So you can actually wire these together on the same circuit. And it works really, really good. I really like these a lot. I use these on my projects. The cool thing is you can pop these out and you can take this plate and you can scuff the plate up a little bit and you can paint it to match your project. This one here is actually going to be going in my Mega Boom box. And I'm going to be painting the cover here the same color I'm painting the speaker grills. And I was also going to talk about the batteries that are going to go in there in just a minute. Now, speaking of Mega Boom box, here's my big one here. And I may need to pull the camera back a little bit so we can see this thing. Let me see here. Anyway, this is my Mega Boom box here. I think I moved the camera a little bit. There we go. This is my baby. 
and it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to get started on this. Um, unfortunately, my wife had to go in the hospital and had to have emergency surgery. And because of the medical bills and medication, I ran out of money to fund this project. Now, it's not over yet. I still just need to get the speakers and the batteries. All these batteries you see me showing them on film here are actually bad batteries. They're not good. But I'm trying to give you a walkthrough of what I plan on doing is, let's see if I can get this up here. Uh, right here in the center, I have a double den uh, Pioneer radio. It's going to pretty much take up this whole square right here. And then below that, I'm going to have my voltage indicator and my USB chargers right there, and they're going to be custom painted. And then right here on each side, I want to go with six and a half inch speakers, but they're too big. So five and a quarter is the biggest I'm going to get. So I have five and a quarters right here in the front. I'm going to have my switches across here, and I haven't decided what switches I'm going with yet because I saw some push button switches that really got my attention. I think I might go with those. I haven't decided yet. And of course, on top here, taking up this whole space right here, I'm going to have a 6x9 right here and a 6x9 right here. And they're going to be kicker speakers all the way around. So we're going to have five and a quarters on each side, kickers on front, switches. On the inside, we're going to have uh, two batteries, and they're going to be 8 amp hour batteries like this. So we're going to have a battery here and a battery in this corner. And I'm doing that to two reasons. Number one, if I put one of those big square batteries in the middle, I'm not going to have enough room because I would have to put it in the middle or the weight would be off when you were trying to carry it. So instead of going with a 15 amp hour battery in the middle that I don't have room for, I'm going to be going with an 8 amp hour battery in each corner. Now the way you do two batteries is you wire them in parallel. And what that means is you go positive to positive and negative to negative. And when you do that, you're still going to have 12 volts, but you're going to have double the amperage. So instead of 8 amp hour and 8 amp hour, it'd be like I have a total of a 16 amp hour battery. So that's the really cool thing about that. But this way the weight will be distributed better, and I have room in the corners versus having a room. Because here in the bottom here below the radio, I'm going to have the power supply kind of towards this side. And then over here, in that side, I'm going to have the amplifier that's going to be powering and powering all these big speakers that we have going. But basically, that's, the, that's an update here on the Mega Boombox. Uh, today is, what is today? The 7th of January. Um, I have some other builds that are on, on, on coming through right now. I have some people that have commissioned me to build them some boomboxes. And if you're one of those people that I'm building a boombox for you, let me say thank you very much uh, for giving me the privilege to build you a boom box. I'm really looking forward to it. I have a few other people that are waiting for their income tax check to come in so they can have me build them a box as well. So you guys have seen my work. I can build you any theme boom box that you like as long as I can get the decals and the paint to paint it. Uh, right now I'm doing a Pittsburgh Steelers boom box. I'm going to be doing a Thundercast boom box and I'm going to be doing a Buffalo Bills boom box. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And that money that I get from there will help finance my speakers and my batteries. Again, I have these, but these are youth batteries. And they're kind of worn out. They came out of my other toolbox projects. I had to, I burned up the batteries at the power supply. So these are actually going to, these are just stand-ins for props. But this is exactly what I'm going to get. So I need $30 for the batteries, and I need $100 for my speakers. So about $130, I'll be able to get this project going. So hopefully, I'm going to start on this by the end of January, beginning of February. I will be giving you guys progress reports when I cut the holes and start getting everything wired. And I'm going to be showing you the wiring process because I'm going to be using a relay inside that will switch from power supply power to the batteries because you do not want the batteries tied together with the power supply. The power supply will charge charge the batteries. So with the relay, when the power supply turns on, it's going to shut off the batteries. And when the power supply turns off, the battery is going to come back on to hold the memory on the radio and power the radio when it's not plugged into the wall. But that's another subject for another day. But 
Oh, I love this box. It's so awesome. I cannot wait to get started on this build. It's driving me crazy, but I'm sure all of you guys know that um, finances are a funny thing sometimes, and this is a hobby, just like anything else, and sometimes life takes priority over your hobbies. So you have to wait. This is this is my baby. I'm building this for myself, and it's a very expensive build. Right now, I'm estimating the parts. Just, just the parts for this build are close to $500. So, if anyone would be interested in me making you a box like this, um, you're, you're going to be looking at at least $700 for a build like this because it's very intensive, a lot of work, a lot of wiring. But hey, if you got the money, I'll make you one. But thanks guys for watching. Uh, Duke is asleep right now. I heard his cousin back here somewhere, but I don't know where she went now. So for Duke, uh, my name is Phil. DIY Boomboxes in Texas. Sorry I rambled so long. Just going to give you guys an update on what's going on. I have over 120 subscribers now. Thank you guys so, so much for supporting my channel. And please tell your friends, tell your family about my channel. I'm trying to get as much exposure as I can because I'm trying to grow my business. Um, I, to me, I don't make, just make boom boxes. I make functional works of art. So you, you've seen my work. And I would love to uh, make you a boom box. So anyway, guys, have a wonderful day. Please join my Facebook page. Uh, I love all things radio is the name of that. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And if this is the first time you're seeing my channel or you're new to my channel, uh, welcome. Um, I'm not an expert in this by any means, but all I can do is just convey the information that I've learned through trial and error. Um, I know not everyone is going to build their own box. Um, I'm doing these videos for the people that want to learn how to build their own, but I'm also doing this for my customers so you can see exactly what's involved in the process and why builders charge the prices that they charge because there's a, there's a lot involved in this, uh, a lot of skill, a lot of artistry. But we love doing this, and it's a lot of fun. So thanks, guys. Um, like I said, this is a boombox update. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the batteries, I'll, I'll try to answer them the best I can. And you guys have a wonderful day. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you later.